Okay, here, the corner is in the correct place with white facing down. Now what you can do is you can preserve this corner and then get this edge down in there. Now look around the cube and make sure that you have at least one empty space. And here I've got three. So you can just rotate an empty space in the way and then rotate this up, grab the edge, and bring it back down. Then you can rotate the bottom layer and pair the edge with the corner it's just like that. Very simple to do. But if this happens and you see that most of the other spaces are full except for this one and you may see that the corner is in the correct place but the edge isn't. Now just consider that as an empty space and then just put the corner in normally. And then you can connect the corner and the edge that goes in there afterwards. But if there is no empty spaces available for you to push in here, then just do the normal algorithm that you learned in the beginner's method. And there you go. Okay, in this case, the edge is down here in the middle layer, and the corner is up here. So what I want to do is bring this edge piece up so that it is in the position with the corner to form an easy pair connection setup. Now, so look at the top color of the corner, and in this case, it's blue. So with that being blue, I want the opposite color to be up on the edge. So in this case, it would be orange. So then if I bring this up, I can almost get the easy pair connection, but this isn't in the correct position to do this. So you just need to get the corner in the correct position. And in this case, it is. So you can bring this up to connect it like that, and then bring this back down, and then you can connect it like that. Now this may be kind of tough to do when you first do it. I mean, when I first tried doing this, I couldn't quite figure out, you know, where the corner should be or which way I should bring up the edge. But just keep at it, you'll be able to get it so that you can easily figure out which way to do it all. But if white is facing up on the corner, then just bring up the edge like this. And then you just do the normal moves to get them in place. Now if the edge ends up being in the correct place and it's flipped correctly, so if it's flipped the other way, then just do the same moves as before. But if it is in the correct place and flipped correctly, then you can preserve that just like you did with the corner. You can rotate it so that an empty edge fits into place and then rotate the top layer so that the corner is either to the left or to the right, but the white is not showing. And then you can bring this up, push in the corner, and bring this down. Then you can bring the edge back. Okay, but just like before, if there are no empty spaces available, but you've got one place where the edge is in the correct place, but the corner isn't, then just treat that like an empty place. So then just rotate it over, and then bring in the corner, and then rotate it back. But if all of the empty spaces are completely filled up, then do these moves. Bring the corner over here so that the white faces you, and then bring up the edge. This way you will form the easy pair connection setup. And then when you brought that up, you created an empty space here, so you can use that to connect these. So rotate it over here, bring this up to connect them, and then rotate it back to connect it with this. And then bring this back down, and then this down. Now, if you see your corner and your edge together in the wrong place, then you can just bring it up like this. And that will separate the corner from the edge, and then you can just do the normal moves to get it into its correct place. If you find a paired corner and edge down on the bottom layer, then you can bring it up like this, and then rotate it over to where it's supposed to go, and then stick it in there. Now just knowing all of those steps, you will be able to do F2L, but you should know that after you learn it well, you won't be able to do it as fast as Frank Morris. It will take a lot of practice for you to get this so simplified that you can do it within 10 seconds. I mean, now that is really fast. Now when I first decided to apply these steps to my own solving of the Rubik's Cube, my time did slow down, but as I practiced more and more and more, it eventually got lower and lower and lower until it was like 20 seconds faster than before. Okay, now on to OLL and PLL algorithms. Now one of the places that I found that has these algorithms is CubeWiz.com. 
Okay, and they do bring up some new notations, so you may want to go to the notations page if you see anything you don't recognize. And then here are the OLL algorithms. Now, there are 57 algorithms here, but don't let that discourage you. You can just solve for the yellow cross right here, and then just use these seven algorithms right here. And then right here, these little yellow lines on the side, that represents yellow on the side of the piece. And then over here on the right, they have video showing the algorithm be done in slow and then in fast. Okay, now for the PLL algorithms. Now this time, there are only 21 algorithms, so that helps it. But right now, I only have a few memorized. Like this algorithm right here. I used it to just switch the edges like normally in step 5 when you learned how to solve the Rubik's Cube normally. And then also to switch the edges across, I also have this one memorized. It saves a little time. And then up here, I now have these two corner switching algorithms, which does the same stuff that occurs in step 6 in solving the Rubik's Cube with the beginner's method. So just knowing those three algorithms, you will then be able to do PLL. So now that's basically it in the advanced method. Now I've got a few more of these algorithms memorized, but you know, just every now and then I'll look at an algorithm and memorize it and then learn it fluently and then maybe learn some more. Okay, now I will demonstrate two solves of me solving the Rubik's Cube using F2L, OLL, and then PLL. And there you go. Now, these were not some of my good solves. They were just some average solves that I did. Okay, so now that that's done, this concludes the tutorial.